One of the things, why are we doing this stuff? A lot of these plants grow at the very best time of the year and the deer eat them up. They're like kids with candy. We want to carry them later when the deer are in desperate need and cut our costs. Food plots cost three cents a pound, pellets cost 25. So we want to bank forage is what we want to do. These are great forages. Up north, I come into the fall with as much of it as I can so I can get snow on it. And believe it or not, it never gets below 32 degrees underneath snow. There's green stuff under the snow, my crop. And the deer dig down and eat the crop. Now, that's a great strategy for up in north, but this ain't north. But it shows you what we're doing. We even strip it to expose it for the deer to eat later. Okay? <clears throat> this is one where what we did was in the fall, we put the fence over here and we grew a crop and protected it from the deer. Then when fall came around, came around, I mean late summer we did that, when fall came around we flipped the fence over and let them eat this. We protected that and December we're taking that fence down. I told you that deer prefer oats over wheat. Don't take my word for it. Snow is a wonderful thing. This is buck forage oats. This is wheat. And this is an electric fence over here, keeping them in, out of here. Yes, sir? Is that a solar panel is what it's being charged with? Yep. Is that all, all that, how big is, uh, I mean, how big is the charge? I mean, do you have, you have 30 of amps and you've got five to 8,500 volts. The reason it doesn't kill you is it has a one millionth of a second duty cycle. It will knock the fire out of you but it won't kill you. Yes? What about the cattle? It controls most cattle except South Texas wild range creatures that are starving to death and they will go through all kinds of pain to go anywhere to get something to eat. But you can put some more wires there and you can hold them out. Yeah. I hold Neil Guy antelope out. I was shocked about that. Okay. All right. <clears throat> We grow, here's another use. You got a neighbor you don't like. He's pouring the corn to the deer. And he's killing every, deer goes over the fence, deer buck boom. Okay? This is, uh, up north we grow uh, Roundup Ready corn and soybeans. Put the fence around it, look at our crop. I had to explain to my graduate students that when the deer eat the daddy part of the plant, you don't get any mommies or babies. Okay? They're, they're not farmers. There's a world-class chicory inside that fence. There's what it looks like outside. Gone. Fall comes. We take the fence down. We own the deer. And our neighbors are mad. By the way, this a bear got in there. We, we changed out the battery. A bear got in there and he couldn't get out. We had to let him out. It's, it was hilarious. Now we even open the gate. We rotation graze. <clears throat> we open the gate, and again, you can see the snow. But let's look at East Texas. Here's East Texas at our research facility. We have uh, two bucks there. Uh, they, this is when they were young. We called them the uh, kicker twins. You'd think they'd look in a mirror together. There's a gate right there. We open the gate and let them in to eat till they eat half of it, and then we close the gate and let it grow back. It grow, they grow back pretty quick. You'll see why I say he looks like a mirror. See this kicker right here? In a minute, his brother's going to show up. They're going in the gate to eat. By the way, you're looking at uh, about three to 4,000 pounds per acre of forage right there. There's his brother. We do strip grazing down right, right of ways. Here we got reels on it. We just pull it back and let the deer graze. Let's look at something exciting and new because we still got forage that, that we're wasting. Now you're about to see something else that you've never seen before. Any questions while I show you this? Yeah. Back to turnips for a second. Yeah. Turnips are bad. Turnips are bad. Yeah. The roots are bad, too. But they'll eat turnips all day long. Oh, yeah. And if you're not careful, you'll poison them. So the turnip itself is bad. They will, yeah. They will not eat turnips all day long. They eat turnips when they get nutritionally stressed. On our study plots, 
we get, we spend a lot of money to grow test plots of turnips and we get four to five days of grazing and they're gone and they don't come back. Okay, here's what we got. This is us. We came, brought some new technology to the United States. These are cow peas. I'm high mowing them. Okay, y'all with me so far? Next thing we do, is we rake them. This is all small scale equipment. You'll be able to get it through the website here pretty quick. There's a buck four jotes, whoops. Buck four jotes that we, that's a 12,000 pounds per acre, okay? That normally would go to waste, okay? Here's our next thing we do. That's a round baler. 60 pound round baler. All right. We bait them up. Here's Ben in the job of the cow peas last week. Wrap the bale. Goes around back. Oh, it pops open. There's our silage bale. And then we do this. And we hermetically seal them. And they will keep for four to five years. And they get better every year because you got yeast and bacteria and stuff working on them. Okay. And if you'd like to know, I will now pass this around. If you want to go ahead and turn the light on, Ben. This is one of the ba out of one of the bales. When I open it up, oh yeah. Ooh. Don't put it. A man put it in his mouth the other day, and he was regretting it. So you have the bale. What do you do? Then we uh, just we just well. Let me go back. I'll show you. I forgot that I was giving a talk. <laughs> if y'all would pass them around rather quickly so everybody can get a look at here. These are uh, these are oats, two different cuttings of oats. This is clover. Uh, the cowpeas go on top of that. We just cut the bales open and. And we're working with uh, nutri deer because they've got some flavorings and stuff too to see we may not even need to add any. But there they are. They've been, those have been sitting there since March. And so you feed those when? Whenever you need to. But I would feed it in the summer and then the winter. Yeah. And there's a, there's a strip clear through the cowpea and there's the cowpeas recovering. Yeah. In South Texas, we do the flip fence still. Those are cow peas. They, we let the deer eat half of these. We flipped the fence over here while they were doing it. Then we flipped it back over here. Not everybody's got that. No. The only way we ever get that is if they drill an oil well and we make them put it in for us. 